Good morning, dear students. My name is Farhan Mazar, and today is 31st of October 2021. The day is Sunday. And right now, I am with the ninth Cambridge class. We call this class O1 class. And we are studying the subject D Maths 4024. And we are working on the syllabus. And we are studying from the D3 book, this new syllabus mathematics seventh edition. We call this the D3 and uh, the chapter four we are working on. The chapter four is indices and the standard form. And today we are going to work on the exercise of 4B. And uh, let's start this exercise, a very simple and straightforward exercise. But for the first timers, it's, it's a little difficult. Okay, so the first question coming up on your screen, and I'm reading from the book. It says, evaluate each of the following. Very simple questions. Okay, so the first question is showing up on your screen. It says, um, 17 raised to power zero. Remember this, anything, anything, any base. Raised to power zero, the answer will be one. So 17 raised to power zero, the answer will be one. Okay, so the answer will be one. Then question number one in B part is bracket minus two by seven, bracket close, raised to power zero. I told you that any base, any base, whether a fraction, whether a single number or with a variable, raised to power zero, the answer will be one. So this, this answer will be one. Then question number one, and it's C part, it says 4A raised to power zero. So this zero is on A, it's not on four. So A raised to power zero, that will be one. So four into one, and that will give you four multiply one, that is four. Question number one is D part minus eight B raised to power zero. You see this B, the zero power is on the B. So uh, b raised to power zero, it will be one, and it's multiplying with the minus eight. So minus eight multiply one, and that will give you minus eight. Then we have e part, and it says bracket starts seventy two c d square bracket close and zero. So uh, you see this whole thing, the, the zero power is for this whole thing because it's outside the the bracket. So the answer will be one. The whole thing will become one. The question number one and it's F part, it says a seven bracket E raised to power eight bracket close raised to power zero. So this zero is uh, over this. So this thing will become one. So seven multiply one, that will be one. So this is question number one. Hopefully you understand. The main point is anything raised to power zero is equals to one. So that's the basic concept which you should keep in your mind. Okay, so we are moving to the next question. And the next question on your screen is question number two. He says to find the value of the each of the following. So question number two, A part is, he says two raised to power zero, multiply two raised to power four. Two raised to power zero, that will be one. Two raised to power four means two multiply two, multiply two, multiply two. So, um, this will be uh, two multiplied two is four, four times two is eight, eight times two is 16. So 16 will be the answer. Question number two and this B part, he says seven raised to power two multiply seven raised to power zero divided by seven. So I can write it like this, seven square multiply seven raised to power zero means one. And because this is divided sign, so I could take this, I can write this seven in the denominator. So seven square, you know, is 49, 49 multiplied one, that will be 49 divided by seven and 49 by seven, that will be seven. Question number two and it's C part, he says eight raised to power zero minus eight raised to power two. You know, eight raised to power zero, that's one and minus eight square means eight multiply eight and that will be 64. So one minus 64 will be minus 63. Then we have question number two and it's D part. It says six raised to power three plus six raised to power zero minus six. 
You know, six raised to the power three means uh, six multiply six multiply six, and that will six six are thirty six. Thirty six six are two one six. Plus uh, six raised to the power zero. Six raised to the power zero means one and minus six. Two one six plus one. That's two one seven minus six. So that will be two eleven. Two hundred and eleven. So this was question number two. Hopefully you understand these concepts. Okay, so let's move to the next question. The next question showing up on your screen is question number three. Evaluate each of the following. Question number three, A part is, uh, now we will have a negative indices, okay? So indices and seven raised to power minus three because this seven, raised to power minus is in the numerator and its power, its exponent is negative. So I will take it downstairs. I will take it into the denominator and the power sign, the sign of the power uh, will change. So you see, uh, you can see that here I have taken it downstairs. So one divided by seven raised to power three. So one is one and seven raised to power three means seven multiply seven multiply seven. Seven sevens are 49, 49 times seven, that's 343. So the answer, the final answer will be one divided by 343. Three. Question number three, and it's B part is a bracket minus five, bracket close, raised to power minus one. Because this power is negative and this whole thing is in the numerator, I will take this whole thing in the denominator and uh, the power will become positive. So I can write one divided by bracket minus five bracket close raised to power plus one. So minus five raised to power plus one, that's minus five. So you, the final answer will be minus one by five. If you have a negative in the coefficient, if you have a negative in the coefficient and the power is odd, the answer will also be negative. And if you have a negative in the coefficient and the power is even, and the, the negative in the coefficient that will turn, that will convert into positive. Okay. So question number three and it's C part, it says uh, bracket three by four, bracket close, whole raised to power minus two. Remember this trick. Here we have a fraction, that's three by four. And over that fraction, we have a negative power minus two. So what you will do, you will flip this fraction. You will reciprocate this fraction and the power will change. The power will become positive. The sign of the power uh, will change. So you can see here, I flipped the fraction. I made it four by three. So the power become from negative two, it becomes positive two. Now you can give this power to both of these, numerator and denominator. So four square, that means four multiply four, that will be 16. 16. And three square, uh, which means three multiply three, that will be nine. Then we have question number three and this D part. Again, you can see we have a fraction here inside that bracket five by three and around it we have brackets and then we have raised to power minus one. The exponent is negative. So what you will do, you will flip the fraction inside that bracket. You will reciprocate the fraction in that bracket and the power is sign will change. So I made it three by five and the power will become positive. So three raised to the power one is three, five raised to the power one is five. So the final answer is three by five. So this was question number three. Hopefully you, you understand it. Okay, now we are moving to the next question. The next question is question number four that is showing up on your screen. And it says evaluate. Evaluate each of the evaluate each of the uh, following question number four a part he says bracket seven square bracket close raised to power minus two divided seven raised to power minus four so you can see here uh, this power and the po power of the power multiplies with each other so they these two they will multiply with each other so you will have seven raised to power minus four divided, so I wrote it as the fraction, this is seven raised to power minus four. So because their denominator is the same and they are dividing, so uh, the, from the upper power, I will subtract the lower power. I mean that the power in the denominator minus the power, 
sorry the power in the numerator uh, minus the power in the denominator because their bases are same so we can do that so i can write 7 raised to the power minus 4 minus minus 4 so it will become 7 raised to the power minus 4 plus 4 and that will be 7 raised to the power 0 and anything raised to power 0 is 1 so you can see here Question number four, B part, it says five, square, five raised to power zero minus five raised to power minus two. You know, five raised to power zero, that will be one because this power is negative. So, and it's in the numerator. So I will take it into the denominator and the power will become positive. So I will write one minus one by five square. You know, five square means five multiply five. That will be 25. So we will have one minus, 1 by 25. So I take the 25 as the LCM. So here 25 will come minus 1. So that will be 24 by 25. I hope you are able to do the fraction, the subtraction of the fraction. So I took the LCM. The LCM is 25. Okay. So the final answer will be 24 by 25. So this is how you will do the question number 4 and it's, C, uh, it's uh, B part. Okay. So let's move to the next question. The next question on your screen is question number four and it's C part. It says two raised to power 15, the whole thing raised to power zero, plus three by five, the whole thing raised to power minus one. You see anything, anything raised to power zero will be one. Here the power is negative, so I will flip this fraction. I will reciprocate this fraction and the power will become positive. So you can see the this thing will be one plus, and uh, I flip the fraction, so five by three raised to power one. So uh, now you will have one plus five by three. Uh, they, they, these are two fractions which are adding. So I will take the LCM. So the LCM will be three. <clears throat> so here you will have one into three plus five by three. I hope you know how to add or subtract the two fractions. So I took the LCM, that's three. So that three will multiply with this numerator and uh, that three divided by three, that's one. One multiply five, that will be five. So three plus five will be eight divided by three. So this is how you do question number eight and it's C part. The next part is question number four and it's D part. It says bracket three by four bracket close raised to power minus two and uh, multiply three square, multiply two zero one five raised to power zero. So uh, first of all, you see this fraction, the power over this fraction is negative. So what I will do, I will flip this fraction. So I will write it four by three and the power will become positive. You can see this power has become positive. And three square means three multiplied three, that will be nine, two, zero, one, five raised to power zero. 2015 raised to power zero, anything raised to power zero, the answer will be one. So you can see we have written here one, so it will be 16 by nine multiply nine into one and nine, nine will be canceled. So you will have 16. So this is how you will do the question number four. And the next question is question number five. So the next question is question number five. And the question says, evaluate each of the following without the use of a calculator. So the, the calculator is not allowed and we have to give the find, evaluate this expression. So here you can see we have square root or you call it under root uh, 196. So uh, the basic trick is uh, square root means or under root means raised to power one by two. This relationship you should always remember that the square root means uh, raised to power one by two. So uh, this in the, under the radical, this sign is called radical sign. So under this radical sign, you know, we have 196. So what I will do in my rough work, I will prime factorize it. So 196 divided by two, that will be 98, and 98 divided by two, that will be 49, 49 divided by seven, that will be seven, seven divided by seven, that will be one. So the 196 is prime factors are two multiply two multiply seven multiply seven, which means 196 is equals to two square multiply seven square. 
So 196 can be written as 2 square into 7 square, and the whole thing is raised from 1 by 2 because it was square root. So this square, these two numbers, these two uh, uh, are multiplying with each other, and around them we have a bracket, and above that bracket we have a power, and that power is 1 by 2. So that power is for both of them. So I will give this power to 2 square, and I will also give this 1 by 2 power to 7 square. So you will have a two square and raised to power one by two multiply seven square uh, raised to power one by two. And you know the power of the power multiplies when you will multiply two with one by two, two and two will be canceled. So you will have two raised to power one. In the same way, here's the power of the power multiplies. So you will have a seven square raised to power one by two. So this two and one by two will multiply. So the two and two will be canceled. So you will have seven raised to power one. So two multiplied by seven, that's 14. So the under root 196, its answer will be 14. This is how we do this question. So question number five, B part, it says cube root of 125. Cube root, here we have a small three written. So that means it's cube root. Cube root means raised to power one by three third root or you can say cube root. So the cube root means raised to power one by three, 125, I can prime factorize it. You have learned in your D1, that is the first chapter of the D1. And there you have learned how to prime factorize. So 125, the first prime number with this, with which this can be divided is five. So 525 is a 125. So again, divide with the five, five fives are 25. Again, with the five, five ones are. So the 125, its prime factors are 5, multiply 5, multiply 5, which means 5 raised to power 3. So in the place of 125, I can write 5 raised to power 3. This third root means 1 raised to power 1 by 3. So now these two are uh, power of the power. They multiply with each other. So 3 multiply 1 by 3, 3 and 3 will be cancelled. So you are left with 5 raised to power 1. So the final answer will be 5. So it means that the cube root of 125 is 5. Okay, so the next question showing up on your screen is question number five and the C part. Here we have uh, the fifth root of one by 32. The fifth root means raised to power one by five. Remember this. The second root means the one by raised to power one by two. Third root means raised to power one by three. Fourth root means uh, raised to power one by four. And the fifth root means raised to power one by five. So here you have one, so one will remain one and 32. 32 can be prime factorized. So in my rough work, I will prime factorize 32. You can see here, the smallest prime number with which the 32 can be divided is, is two. So two, 16 times is 32, again two, two eights are 16. Okay, again with the two, two fours are eight. Again, we can go with the two, two twos are four and two twos are one. So the 32 is basically 2 multiply 2 multiply 2 multiply 2 multiply 2. So 32 is basically 2 raised to power 5. So uh, 1 raised to power anything, the answer is always 1. And this power is also for this. So 2 raised to power 5 and raised to power 1 by 5. This is power of the power. So they multiply, the powers multiply with each other. So 5 multiply 1 by 5, 5 and 1 by 5. 5, 5 will be cancelled. And so you will be left with two raised to power one. So your final answer is one by two. So the fifth root of the one by 32 will be one by two. So that was question number five and it's C part. Then we have question number five and it's D part. It says the fourth root of 16 by 81. Fourth root means the whole thing raised to power one by four. You can prime factorize 16. You know 16 is uh, can be divided with the two. Two eights are again with the two, two fours are two, again with the two, two twos are so again with the two, two ones are. So 16 is basically two multiply two multiply two multiply two, which means 16 is equals to two raised to power four. In the same way, I can prime factorize 81. And uh, the smallest prime number with which the 81 can be divided, that is three. So 327 times is 81, 39 times is 27, 33 times is 9, and 31 times is 3. So the 81 is basically equal to 3 multiplied 3 multiplied 3 multiplied 3. 
or you can say 81 is equals to 3 raised to power 4. So in the place of 16, I have written 2 raised to power 4. In the place of 81, I have written here 3 raised to power 4. And the whole thing is 4th root, so the whole thing raised to power 1 by 4. Because these two are dividing and they have a bracket around, that, around them, and then we have a power over it. So this power is for both the numerator and the denominator. So I will give this 1 by 4 power to both of them separately. So 2 raised to power 4 raised to power 1 by 4, and 3 raised to power 4 raised to power 1 by 4. The power of the power multiplies with each other. So when you multiply 4 with 1 by 4, 4, 4 will cancel, and you get only 1. So 2 raised to power 1, that will be 2. In the same way, in the denominator, you have this. So power of the power, they will multiply with each other. So 4 multiply 1 by 4, 4 and 4 will be cancelled. So you will be left with 1. So 3 raised to power 1, that will be 3. So the final answer will be 2 by 3. So it means that the fourth root of the 16 by 81 will be 2 by 3. So this is how you do the question number 5. And... We are done with the question number five. Okay, so let's move to the next question. The next question coming up on your screen is question number six. And let me read the statement of the question from the book. Rewrite each of the following in the radical form and hence evaluate the result without the use of a calculator. Okay, so here they have given us AP1 raised to power one by two in the radical form. Uh, you know, it is uh, yeah, one by two means square root. So I can write and square root of the 81. The next part is, he says, evaluate it. You know, 81, we have in the last question, we have factorized it, prime factorized it, and 81 means 3 raised to power 4. So 3 raised to power 4 raised to power 1 by 2, the power of the power multiplies. When you multiply 4 with 1 by 2, you get 2. The answer will be 2. So you will have 3 raised to power 2. So 3 raised to power 2 means 3 multiplied by 3, and that will be 9. So this is how you do question number 6, A part. Then we have question number 6, and it's B part. It says bracket minus 27, bracket close, raised to power 1 by 3. Raised to power 1 by 3 means uh, it's the third root. So in the radical form, you can see I have written here, it can be written as the third root of minus 27. And when you want to evaluate it, you can prime factorize 27 and you will get uh, 3 raised to power 3. So because it's negative, so I can write minus 3, the whole thing raised to power 3. And then again, the brackets and raised to power 1 by 3. This power and power, they will multiply with each other. So this 3 and this 3 will be cancelled. So minus 3 raised to power 1, that will be minus 3. So this is how you do question number 6 and it's B part. Okay, so we have question number six, and it's C part. It says 16 raised to power minus one by four. You know, 16 raised to power minus one by four. Uh, first of all, uh, I can flip this fraction. This fraction is 16 by one, and its power is minus one by four because the power is negative. So inside the bracket, I will flip, I will reciprocate the fraction. And when I will reciprocate the fraction, it will become one by 16. And the power over that bracket, that will become positive. So I wrote here, you can see here, 1 by 16 raised to power 1 by 4. So it is equal to the fourth root of 1 by 16. So we can evaluate it. You know, the 16 is basically 2 raised to power 4. Uh, 2 multiplied 2 is 4. 4 multiplied 2 is 8. 8 multiplied 2 is 16. So 16 is 2 raised to power 4. And this whole thing is raised to power minus 1 by 4. So power of the power multiplies with each other. So 4 multiplied with minus 1 by 4, that will give you minus 1. So your answer is 2 raised to minus 1. And the final answer will be because it's negative power. And it's in the numerator. So I will take it, it, it into the denominator. And the power will become positive. So you will have 1 by 2. So this is how you do question number 6. And it's C part. Then we have the question number 6. And it's D part. It says, 4 raised to power 1.5. 4 raised to power 1.5. When I will remove this decimal, which is in the power 1.5, I will remove this decimal. So 4 raised to power will be 15 by 10. In the place of point in the denominator, I will put 1. And after the decimal, there is only one digit. So I will put 1, 0. So now you have 4 raised to power 15 by 10. You see 15 and 10, they both can be cancelled with 5. So you will have 4 raised to power 3 by 2. 4 raised to power 3 by 2. 
So it means four raised to power three, the whole thing raised to power one by two. Okay. So it means four cube and its square root. So this is the radical form in which you can write it. Now, when you want to evaluate this in the place of four, I will put two square. So you will have two square raised to power three by two. They multiplied with each other in power, so it becomes three by two. This two and this two will be canceled. So you will have two raised to power three and the final answer will be eight. So question number six and this D part, the final answer is eight. Okay, so let's move to the next part. Question number six and it's E part. It says eight raised to power minus five by three because the power is negative. So I will take this eight from the numerator into the denominator. So I will have one divided by eight raised to power five by three. And you know, the eight can be prime factorized and the eight is basically two multiplied two multiplied two, that is two raised to power three. So one divided by two raised to power three, the whole thing raised to power five by three. This power and the power, they will multiply with each other five and three and three will be canceled. So you will have one by two raised to power five, which is one by 32. Two raised to power five means two multiplied two multiplied two multiplied two multiplied two. So two twos are four, four twos are eight, eight twos are 16, 16 twos are 32. So the two raised to the power five will be 32, one by 32. So if you want to write it in the radical form, so one by eight raised to the power five by three. So one by eight raised to the power five, the whole thing raised to the power, uh, you know, this is the third root. This is cube root because the power was one by three. That's the cube root. So now we have the question number one and it's F part, it says, uh, bracket minus 1000 bracket close raised to power two by three. So you can prime factorize to 1000 here. You can see I have prime factorized it uh, 1000 in my rough work. So 1000 can be divided with the smallest prime number. That's two and you will get 500 again with the two. You get 250 again with the two, you get 125. Then with the five, 25, five, you get five, five, you get one. So it means that the 1000 is basically equals to two raised to power three multiply with five raised to power three. So because here in the coefficient we have a negative, so you can either put the negative with the two or you can put the negative with the three. So here you can say I've written minus my bracket minus two bracket close cube bracket start five bracket close cube and the whole bracket and then a bracket and raised to power two by three. So you this because these two numbers are multiplying with each other and they have a bracket around them and there's a power over that bracket. So that power is for both of them. So you can see here, I have given this power to both of them. You will have minus two raised to power three and the, then you raised to power two by three. In the same way here, you can, I, I've written that five raised to power three multiply two by three. Power of the power multiplies with each other. So when you multiply three with two by three, the three and three will be canceled. You are left with minus two, the whole thing raised to power two. Multiply here again, three and three will be canceled. You will have five square. So minus two raised to power two, the power is even. So the answer will be positive. Minus two multiply minus two, and that will be positive four. And five square means five multiply five, and that will be 25. So you will have four multiply with the 25 and that will be 100. So the cube root of the minus 1000 and a square, that will be 1000. The final answer will be 1000. So my dear student, this is how you will do the question number six. Next question is question number seven and he says, Simplify each of the following, expressing your answer in the index form. Okay, so the next question is question number seven. So question number seven, A part is the fourth root of A. So in the fourth root means raised to power one by four. Fourth root means uh, raised to power one by four. So you can see here we have written that A raised to power one by four. Okay, the next question, 7B, and it says the third root of B square. The third root of B square means B square raised to power one by three, and you know the power of the power multiplies. So the two multiply with one by three, that will be two by three. So you will have B raised to power two by three. So the next question is C part. Here we have bracket, fifth root, bracket close, bracket, fifth root of the C and bracket close and raised to power four. 
So this fifth root means raised to the power one by five. So you have c raised to the power one by five, and the whole thing raised to the power four. So the power of the power multiplies with each other. So you will have when one by five will multiply with the four, the answer will be four by five. So the c raised to the power four by five is the index form. Now the question number seven and its d part. He says one divided by six root of the d. So you will have one divided by d raised to the power one by six. Because this is in the denominator, if you write it in the numerator, the power will become negative. So you can write uh, d raised to the power minus one by six. Okay. So the next part is question number seven, and it's the e part. It is one divided by eighth root of e raised to the power four. Okay. So eighth root means raised to power one by eight. So this is one divided by bracket e raised to power four bracket goes raised to power one by eight. The power of the power multiplies with each other. So you will have four multiply one by eight. So four and eight will be cancelled. So you are left with one by two. So one divided by e raised to power one by two. So if I bring this upstairs, so the power will become negative. So you will have e raised to power minus one by two. Question number seven and its f part is one divided by bracket q uh, third root of f bracket close four raised to power five. So we will have one and uh, this is third root of uh, of the f. So that will be f raised to power one by three raised to power five. The power of the power multiplies. So one by three multiply five. That will be five by three. So when I write it upstairs, this is in the denominator. When I write it in the numerator, the sign of the power will change. So I can write f raised to power minus five by three. So this is how you do question number seven. And let's move to the next question. The next question is question number eight. He says, uh, solve each of the following equations. This is very important and a little tricky also. You see, eleven raised to power a is equals to one three one. So we have to find out the value of the a, and you know, a is a variable, and that variable is not in the base, but it in it is in the in the exponent. It is in the power. So uh, what I will do, one three three one, I will prime factorize it. It can be only divided with the eleven. So eleven ones are, and then you will have two. So eleven twos are twenty-two. So one is left. Eleven eleven ones are. So again, it can be divided with eleven. Eleven eleven are one twenty-one, and then again with eleven eleven ones are. So one three one one three three one is eleven raised to power three. So now you can see here uh, in the place of one three three one, I have written eleven raised to power three, because now if you look at this equation, um, both the sides are equal to each other and uh, their bases are same, so their powers will also be same. So by comparison, I can tell. That a will be three. So this is how you do question number eight and its a part. Okay. Question number two. Sorry, question number eight and its b part. You will have two raised to power b equals to one divided by one twenty eight. So uh, you know one twenty eight. Uh, I can prime factorize it. It can be divided with the two. It can be divided with the twos. You get sixty-eight again with the two. You get thirty-two again with two. You get sixteen again with two. You get eight again with the two. You get four again divided by two. That will be two. Two divided by two. That will be one. So one twenty-eight is basically equals to two raised to power seven. So this one by one twenty-eight that will be one by two raised to power seven. So I bring it upstairs. So you will have two raised to the power minus seven. So it means two raised to the power b is equal to two raised to the power minus seven, because these two are equal to each other. Their bases are same, so their powers will also be same. So you will have b raised to power b is equal to minus seven. So the powers will also be same. So when you compare the powers, and that will give you b equal to minus seven. Okay, question number eight and its c part. It says nine raised to power c is equal to two four three. So what I will do, I will prime factorize two four three. So it can be divided with the three three eighty ones are again with the three three twenty sevens are again with the three three nines are again with the three three threes are again with the three three ones are. 
So the 243 is basically 2 raised to power 5. Sorry, uh, 243 is equal to 3 raised to power 5. Okay, 3 raised to power 5. So 9 can also be replaced with the 3. In the place of 9, I can write 3 square. So you will have 3 square raised to power c equals to 3 raised to power 5. So this power of the power will multiply. So you will have 3 raised to power 2c equals to 3 raised to power 5. So because they are equal, their bases are same. Uh, so their powers will also be same. So you will have 2c equals to 5. So C will be equals to 5 by 2. So C will be equals to 2 whole 1 by 2. So this is how you do question number 8, C part. Let's move to the next part. The next part is question number 8 and it's D part. It says uh, 10 raised to power D is equal to 0 0.01. So, you know, if I remove this decimal, this decimal here, so 10 power D will be equals to one by one. And after the decimal, you have two, uh, you know, your two fractions. So you will put two, two zeros. So that will be zero, zero. So 0 0.01 means one divided by 1,000, 100, sorry. And 100 means 10 raised power two. And when do you bring this square upstairs? So it will come, here it is positive, it will become negative. So you have here 10 raised power D equals to 10 raised power minus two. So because they are equal, they're basically the same, so their powers will be also same. So the D will be equals to uh, minus two. Question number eight and it's D part. The answer of the D is minus two. So this is how you do question number eight and we are done with the, all the parts of the question number eight. And I hope that this concept is clear to you as well. Okay, so the next question, uh, which is coming up on your screen is question number. So the next question is question number nine and it says simplify each of the following expressing uh, your answers in the positive index form. So we have, we have to simplify them. And the final answers powers should be positive. So the question number one, uh, sorry, question number nine and this A part is 5A raised to power four multiply 3A raised to power two divided A raised to power minus three. Okay, so uh, these two, they are multiplying with each other. So the coefficient will multiply with the coefficient. So three multiply uh, with the five, that will be 15. And when you multiply a four, a raised to power four with a raised to power two, so they can be written as a raised to power, the powers will be added. So four plus two, that will be uh, six. This is divided by a raised to power minus three. So I can write it in the denominator. So you can see I have written it, a raised to power minus three in the denominator because of this divide sign. So the final answer will be 15, a raised to power, so this will be six minus the denominator, and the a in the denominator is power is minus three, so six minus minus three. So you will have 15, a raised to power six plus three, so that's 15, a raised to power five. So this is how you will solve this, a very simple and a straightforward question. So the next question is question number nine, and it's B part. It says minus 24 b raised to power minus six, divide bracket start three b raised to power minus three, bracket close, square. Okay, so this will be minus 24 uh, b raised to power minus six. This divide means this should be in the denominator divided by square is for all both of them. So in three square will be nine and b raised to power minus three, when you square it, the power of the power multiplies so you will have b raised to the power minus six. So uh, this, the coefficients, they can be divided with the, each other or, the, or you can say we can cancel them. So uh, they have been canceled with the three. So you are left with three eights are 24 to three is a nine. So you have minus eight by three and they can be uh, solved with each other. So b raised to the minus six minus minus six, it will become, um, b raised to power six plus six, uh, minus six plus six, sorry. And that will give you b raised to power zero. So b raised to power zero means one. So the final answer will be minus eight by three. 
So this is how you will do the question number nine B part and hopefully you will be able to do this. Okay, so next question coming up on your screen. That is question number nine and it's C part. It says three C, the whole thing raised from zero divided by a bracket start C raised to power minus three D raised to power five bracket close and raised to power minus two. Okay. So, you know, uh, this, this whole thing is raised to power zero. Anything raised to power zero, the answer will be one. Divide means to write, a, uh, write this thing here in the denominator. This minus two is for both of these, okay? So this power can be given to both of them. So you will have C raised to power minus three raised to power minus two, D raised to power five raised to power minus two. Power of the power multiplies with each other. So you will have one divided by Minus three multiply minus two, that will give you plus six. Five multiply minus two, that will give you minus 10. So because this D has a negative power and it's in the denominator, you take it into the numerator and the power will become positive. So the final answer will be D raised to power 10 divided by C raised to power six. So this is how you do question number nine C part. Okay, so let's move to the next part. The next part is question number nine and it's D part. And it says uh, bracket uh, four e raised to power minus six f raised to power three bracket close square divided by eight e raised to power twelve f raised to power six. So this square is for all of them inside the bracket. So because they are multiplying, so this square will be directly given to all of them. So when square four four is given square, it will be sixteen e raised to power minus six multi. Uh, it's when you give square to this, it will become e raised to power minus 12. And when you give F3 square, when you give the power two to the F3, so it will become F raised to power six, the power of the power multiplies. So downstairs you have eight e raised to power 12, F raised to power six. So you can write two e raised to power minus two, minus the power here, minus, two, minus 12. So F again, six minus six, and it will be two E raised to power minus 24, F raised to power zero. F raised to power zero, that means, that means one. So you are left with two E raised to power minus 24. This power is negative and it's in the numerator, take it into the denominator and the power will become positive. So you will have two uh, divided by E raised to power 24. So this is how you do question number nine and it's D part. So let's move to the next part. Next part is question number nine and it's E part. And it says bracket start, three G raised to power minus three, H raised to power minus one, bracket close square, multiply, bracket start minus four, G raised to power three, H raised to power minus two, bracket close and square. So you, you know, this square is for all of them. They are multiplying and around them we have a bracket and above that bracket we have a square. Uh, so that square is for all of them who are inside that bracket. So three square and G raised to the power minus three is square and H raised to the power minus one is square. In the same way, you can do that same thing here. Minus four raised to the power two multiply uh, G raised to the power three raised to the power two multiply H raised to the power minus two and raised to the power two. Three square will be nine. Three multiply three, that's nine. Here, the power of the power multiplies with each other. So you will have G raised to the power minus six, H raised to the power minus two, and minus four and square because you took the square of the negative. So it will be positive. So you will have 16. And here, the power of the power will multiply. So three multiplied two, that will be six. So G raised to the power six. Power of the power multiplies, so it will be minus four. So H will be minus four. So when you multiply them, so it will be nine multiplied 16, that's 144. And when you multiply G minus six with the G six, you will add their power. So you can see here minus six plus six. In the same way, H raised to power minus two and H raised to the power minus four, they multiply, their powers will be added basically. So minus two plus minus four. And so, and then we will have 144 G raised to the power zero and H raised to the power minus six. Because G raised to the power zero means one. Okay, so you have 144 into one. And this power is negative, so take it to the downstairs. So you will have 144 divided by h raised to the power 6. So this is how you do question number 9, and it's e part. Okay, so next is question number 9, and it's f part. It says bracket start j square 
k raised to the power minus 1 bracket close raised to the power minus 3 multiply j square bracket start j square divided by k cube bracket close raised to power minus 3 so this power uh, minus 3 power is for both of them they are multiplying inside the bracket so this power can be given directly to them so you will have g square raised to the minus 3 then we have k raised to the minus 1 raised to the minus 3 multiply here the power is negative so you can flip this fraction and the power will become positive so i have written here k cube divided by j square raised to the minus 3 so now this will be j raised to the minus 6 this will be k raised to the power plus 3 multiply k raised to 9 divided by j raised to power 6. So you will have j raised to minus 6 minus 6 into k raised to 3 plus 9. So j raised to power minus 12 into k raised to 12. So because we want the answers in the positive notation, so I can write uh, k raised to 12 divided by j raised to 12. So this is how you do question number 9, and it's f part. Hopefully you understood. Okay, question number nine, and it's G part. <clears throat> Here we have M raised bracket, M raised to five multiply, N raised to three bracket close. Multiply with bracket start, M square bracket close, raised to power minus two. And in the downstairs, we have bracket M raised to power minus one, and, and bracket close raised to power two. So this is how we will do it. Uh, you know, this is M5 and Q multiply. This will become M raised by minus four divided by M minus two into N square. So you will have M raised by five minus four plus N raised by three divided by M square minus raised by minus two multiply with N square. So at the end, you will have m raised to power, uh, you know, uh, it will be one and this will become positive two when it will come upstairs. One plus two, multiply n raised to power three minus two and that will be n raised to power one. So you will have m cube multiply with the n. So this is how you will do question number nine and it's g part. Okay, question number nine, and this H part is showing up on your screen. It says bracket 5P, bracket close raised to power 3 minus uh, 1, sorry, 10P multiply 7P square plus 6 divided by P raised to power minus 3. So very simple. You know that the cube is, these are the two different numbers. Uh, one is variable, the one is the, a number. And then they have a whole power on them. So that number, that power is for both of them. So P cube, that will be 125. P will be P cube minus. This will be 70 P cube plus, And this will go to upstairs. So you will have 6 P cube. So, so when you do 125 minus 70 plus 6. So the answer will be 61 P raised to power 3. So this is how we do this question that was question number nine hopefully you have understood this question number 10 it says uh, simplify each of the following expressing your answer in the positive index form so question number 10 a part you have you can see that square root a multiply with the third root a so square root a means a raised power one by two and the third root means a raised power one by three. When they will multiply, the powers will be added. So you will have a raised power one by two plus one by three. And so because you are adding two fractions in the power and I can take the LCM, the LCM of one by two plus one by three, the LCM will be six. So you will have three plus two divided by six, that will be five by six. So our final answer will be a raised to power uh, five by six. So this was question number 10 and it's a part. Hopefully you understand. And let's, let's move to the next part. Third root of the B square divided by the sixth root of the B. Uh, B square and you have third root of it. So you will have B square. So you will have B raised to power 
2 by 3 multiply. This is the sixth root of the b. That means b raised power 1 by 6. And because they are dividing, so because they are dividing, so their powers will be subtracted. So you will have b raised power 2 by 3 minus 1 by 6. So we'll take the LCM and that will be 6. And uh, 6 divided by 3, that will be 2. 2 multiplied 2, that will be 4. And 6 divided by 6, that will be 1. 1 multiplied 1 will be 1. So you will have 4 minus 1 divided by 3. So 4 minus 1, that will be 3 divided by 6. So the final answer will be B is B raised to 1 by 2. That will be the final. Then we have question number 10, and it's C part. It says C raised to power 4 by 5 multiply C raised to power 1 by 2 divided by C raised to power minus 2 by 5. So, you know, uh, the powers will be added. So you will have four C raised to power 4 by 5 plus 1 by 2 divided by the denominator. That will be C raised to power minus 2 by 5. So, uh, so you will have C raised to power 8 plus 5 divided by 10. We took the LCM and this will remain as it is C raised to power minus 2 by 5. So you will have C raised to power, this will be 13 by 10 and this is negative here. So it will become, because this is negative when you take it to the upstairs, it will become positive. So when you take the LCM, it will be C raised to power. Uh, in the LCM, you will have 10 and 13 plus 4. So C will be equal to 17 uh, by 10. Okay, so let's move to the next part. So uh, the question number 10 in this B part, it says third root of the B square divided by the sixth root of the B. And uh, we can do it very easily. You know, the third root of the B means uh, raised to power 1 by 3. So you have B raised to power 2 by 3. Six, sixth root of the B means B raised to power 1 by 6. So because they are dividing, so the powers will be subtracted. So you can write B raised to power uh, 2 by 3 minus 1 by 6. So I can take the LCM. So LCM will be 6. So you will have, when 6 will be divided with the 3, you get 2, 2 multiplied with the 2, that will be 4. So the 6 divided by 6, that will be 1. 1 multiplied by 1 will be 1. So you have 4 minus 1 divided by 6. So the B raised power 3 by 6 and 3 by 6 means uh, 3 and 6 will be cancelled. So you will have B raised power 1 by 2. So this is how you do question number 10 and it's B part. Then we have the question number 10 and uh, it's C part. It says C raised to power 4 by 5 multiply C raised power 1 by 2 divided by C raised power minus 2 by 3. So because they are multiplying with each other, so their powers will be added. So you will have C raised to power 4 by 5 plus 1 by 2. This is divided by, so I will write it in the denominator. So you will have C raised to power minus 2 by 5 and equals to, so I take the LCM of these two, the LCM will be 10. So you will have uh, 10 divided by 5, that will be 2. 2 multiply 4, that will be 8. 10 divided by 2, that will be 5. 5 multiply 1, that will be 5. So upstairs, you will have 8 plus 5 divided by 10. Downstairs, you have C raised to power minus 2 by 5. So upstairs, you will have C raised to power 13 by 10. And this power will be subtracted from the, uh, the power which was upstairs. So if sign will change, so you have 13 by 10 plus 2 by 5. Actually, from the upper power, we are subtracting the lower power. And the power of in the numerator minus the power in the denominator. So you will have the LCM is 10, so you will have 13 plus 4, and that will be 17. C raised to power 17 by 10. It's a little tricky question, but hopefully when you will practice yourself, you will be able to understand. Okay, so, so the next question is question number 10, and it's D part. Question number 10 and its D part is D raised to power 1 by 10 divided D raised to power uh, minus 1 by 5 multiplied D raised to power minus 3 by 2. 
So because these two, they are dividing with each other. So I can write it into the fractions. So d raised to the 1 by 10 divided by d raised to the minus 1 by 5 multiply d raised to the minus 3 by 2. So because uh, this d raised to the 1 by 10 and d raised to the minus 3 by 2, they are multiplying with each other. So I will add their powers. So you will have d raised to the power 1 by 10 minus 3 by 2. And downstairs, you have d raised to the minus 1 by 5. So I can take their LCM, that is 10. So you will have 1 minus 15. And downstairs, d raised to the minus 1 by 5. So this is the d raised to the power minus 14 by 10. And from that, subtract this lower, the power in the numerator, in the denominator, sorry. So you will have minus 14 by 10 plus 1 by 5. So again, take the LCMs, you will have d raised to power, and the LCM is 10. So you will have minus 14 plus 2. So it will be d raised to the power minus 12 by 10. And you know that the power is negative. So you take this to the denominator. And the power will become positive plus 12 and 10. They can be canceled with the two. So you will have d1 divided by d raised to power 6 by 5. So this is how you do question number 10 and it's d part. The next question coming up on your screen is question number 10 and it's e part. Bracket e raised to power minus 3, f raised to power 4, bracket close raised to power minus 1 by 2. Because these two numbers are multi, these two, these two, they are multiplying with each other. And then we have bracket around them. And then we have a raised to power thing, a power here. So that power is for both of them. So I can write E raised to minus three, the whole thing raised to power minus one by two. F raised to four, the whole thing raised to power minus one by two. Power of the power will multiply with each other. So E raised power and minus three multiply with minus one by two. And that will give you E raised power three by two. Same way, f raised to power 4 raised to power minus 1 by 2, the power of the power multiplies with each other. So the 4 will multiply with minus 1 by 2, and you will have minus 2. So here you have f raised to power minus 2. So because this power is negative, so take, the, take it to the downstairs, and this power will become positive. So you will have e raised to power 3 by 2 divided by f raised to power 2. So this is how you do question number 10, and it's e part. Okay, question number 10, and it's f part. It says, uh, G raised to power two by three and H raised to power minus four by five and the whole thing raised to power three by two. So you know these two numbers, they are multiplying with each other. So this is that power. So this power will be for both of them. So we will give them both this power. So you will have uh, G raised to power two by three multiplied three by two, three, three cancel to two cancels. You have, you get G raised to power one. In the same way, h raised to power minus 4 by 5, 3 by 2. So this multiply with each other. So you will have two ones are two twos are. So you will have two three that's six. So you the h will be minus six by five. So because this power is negative, so take it downstairs. So you will have g divided by h raised to power six by five. So my dear student, this is how you do the question number 10. And it has a, b, c, d, e, e, f part. So we are done with this part. So this is how you do question number 10. I hope you have understood. So after this, we have the question number 11. And okay, um, so let's move to the next question. The next question is question number 11. Yeah, the book says simplify each of the following expressing your answer in the positive index form. So the first question, the question number 11, A part is bracket, um, A raised to the power minus two, B raised to the power three, bracket close, raised to the power one by three, multiply A raised to the power four, B raised to the power minus five, and bracket close, raised to the power one by two. So we have to simplify this. So this one by three is, this power is for both of them. So we will give this power to both of them. So you will have A raised to the power minus two, raised to the power one by three, B raised to the power three, raised to the power one by three. Same way here, this one by two is for both of these. So we will give this one by two power to both of them, okay? So here you have a raised to power four raised to power one by two multiply b raised to power minus five raised to power one by two. So this will become a raised to power minus two by three, b raised to power three and three cancel, b raised to power one multiply, and two and four will be canceled, so a square, and here you will have b raised to power minus five by two. So this is a, this is a, so I can write this as a raised to power minus two by three plus, the powers are added. This is B, this is B, so their powers will also be added. So you will have B raised to the power 1 minus 5 by 2. So I can take the LCM here, uh, minus 2 by 3 plus 2. I hope you understand the addition of uh, fractions. So I will take their LCM. So you will have uh, 3 is the LCM, so you will have minus 2 plus 6. 
In the same way, in here, I have to do one minus five by two. These are the two fractions. I want to subtract them. Uh, so I will take the LCM. The LCM is two. So you will have two minus five upstairs. So A raised to the power four by three, and this will be B raised to the power minus three by two because this power is negative. So I will take it downstairs. So A raised to the power four by three and B raised to the power three by two. So this is our final answer. So this is how you do question number 11 is A. Uh, question number uh, 11, and it's B part. It says C bracket C raised to the power minus 3, D raised to the power 3 by 5, bracket close raised to the power minus 2, multiply with bracket C raised to the power 4 by 5, D raised to the power 2 by 5, uh, minus 2 by 5, and bracket close and raised to the power 5. So the technique is same. So you see this power is for both of them. This power is for both of them. So you put this, give this power to both of them. So here you have c raised to the power minus 3 raised to the power minus 2, d raised to the power 3 by 5 raised to the power minus 2 in the same way here. c raised to the power 4 by 5 raised to the power 5, d raised to the power minus 2 by 5 raised to the power 5. The power of the power multiplies with each other, so you will have c raised to the power 6, minus minus will be positive 6. So here you will have c d raised to the power minus 6 by 5. This will be 5, 5 cancelled, so you have c raised to the power 4. And here a 5, 5 will be cancelled, so you will have d raised to the power minus 2. So because they are multiplying, so this C and this C, their powers will be added. So you will have C raised to power six plus four. These two, their powers will be added. So you will have D raised to power minus six by five minus two. So, so this will be C raised to power 10, D raised to power uh, because these are two fractions. So I will take their LCM, the LCM is five. So you will have minus six minus 10. So C raised to power 10, D raised to power minus 16 by five because this power is negative. So I will take it into the, into the denominators. So this power will become positive. So you will have C raised to the power 10 divided by D raised to the power 16 by 5. So this is how you do question number 11 and it's B part. Let's go to the next part. So here we have question number 11 and it's C part. It says E raised to the power minus 1 by 3, F raised to the power minus 1 by 4, divided by bracket E square, F raised to the power minus 1 by 3, bracket close raised to the power minus 2. So uh, they will remain as it is. And uh, here, because these two are multiplying, and this is the uh, power, uh, uh, we have a bracket around them, and then we have a minus two power. So that minus two power is for both of them. So I will give this power to both of them. So here you can see e square raised to power minus two, f raised to power minus one, but three raised to power minus two. The power of the power multiplies with each other. So you will have e raised to power minus four, and here you will have f raised to power two by three. So because they are dividing here, you see the power from the, so you can simplify it as e raised to the power minus one by three uh, plus four and f raised to the power minus one by four minus two by three. So I will take the LCM here. So you will have e raised to the power three one, minus one plus 12. Same way I will take the LCM here and that LCM will be 12. So you will have f raised to the power minus three minus eight and divided by 12, yeah, e raised equals to e raised to 11 by 3, f raised to power minus 11 by 12, because this power is negative, so I will take it to, to, to the denominator. So e raised to power 11 by 3 divided by f raised to power 11 by 12. So that's this is how you do this question. That's the question number 11 in C part. Okay, now we have the question number 11, and it's D part. It says a bracket g raised to power minus 2, h raised, h raised to power 2, divided by 25, bracket close, raised to the power minus one by two. So this power is for all of them. But, be, uh, okay, so give this power to all of them separately, okay? So G raised to the power minus two, raised to the power minus one by two, A square raised to the power minus one by two, five, 25 is five square. So five square raised to the power minus one by two. So you will have G, H raised to the power minus one, five raised to the power minus one. So because these are negative, they have negative power. So that five, take this into the numerator and H, bring this into the denominator, the powers will become positive. So your final answer will be 5G divided by H. Question number 11, and it's E part. It says uh, bracket 4J raised to power 4K, bracket close raised to power 1 by 2, divided by 2H cube H uh, K raised to power minus 1 by 2. So, you know, this power, and they are multiplying with each other, and then we have a bracket around it, and then we have a power here. So this power is for all of them. 
So four that can be written as two square and then raised to power one by two, J four raised to power one by two, K raised to power one by two. This divide I write here by sign and this whole thing will be in the denominator, okay? So you have two, this two and two cancel, so two raised to power one, so this is two that. Two, four and one by two when multiply, you get two, so J raised to power two and K raised to power one by two. Downstairs you have two H cube K raised to power minus one by two. So this two and two will be canceled. So you are left with the J square and the, you can you can solve them. I'm saw means I simplify them. So you will have K one by two plus one by two divided by H cube. So one by two plus one by two, that will be one. So you have J square K raised by one divided by H cube. So this is how you do question number 11 and it's E part. Okay, so then we have the question number 11 and it's F part and it says uh, uh, bracket start m cube n raised to power minus one by four bracket close raised to power four divided by the fifth root of 32 m4 n minus eight okay so you know this look at here carefully they are multiplying we have bracket around it then we have power so this power is for both of them so give this power individually to both of them so you will have m cube raised to power four n raised to power minus one by four raised to power four. This divide, okay, so I write this by sign. And this is the fifth root. Fifth root means raised to power one by five. So 32 is two raised to power five. You know, we have already learned in this exercise that when I prime factorize 32, that gives me 32 is uh, two raised to power five. So two raised to power five raised to power one by five and m raised to power four raised to power one by five and n raised to power minus 8 raised to power 1 by 5. So I will get m raised to power 12, n raised to power minus 1, then 2, and m raised to power 4 by 5, n raised to power minus 8 by 5. So I can write this m 12 minus 4 by 5. So you see, from 12, I will subtract this power, and minus 1 minus minus 8 by 5, so it will become plus. So minus 1 plus 8 by 5. So this is a fraction, so I can take the LCM. The LCM is 5, so you have 60 minus 4. And here the LCM will be also five. You have minus five plus eight divided by five. So you will have here M raised to power 56 divided by five and N raised to power three by five divided by two. So this is our final answer. So that's question number 11 and it's F part. So uh, we are done with the question number 11. So now we are moving to the next question. And that next question is question number 12 of the exercise four B. So the question number 12, it says simplify each of the following expressing your answer in the positive index form. So let's go to the question number 12. So question number 12 is simplify each of the following expressing your answers in the positive index form. So the question number 12 is a part is, it's a huge lots of variables involved. So bracket, it says x raised to power minus four, y raised to power seven, z raised to power minus six divided by x raised power three, y raised power minus one, z raised power three, and the bracket close, and four raised power three, multiply x raised power five, y square z minus six, divided by x minus three, y raised power minus five, z raised power four, bracket close, raised power minus four. So I will I will solve them first of all inside the bracket. So this will become uh, x raised power minus seven, this will become x raised to y raised power eight, this will become, z raised to power minus nine raised to power three. In the same way here, this will become x raised to power eight. This will become x raised to power uh, seven. This will become z raised to power minus 10, right? And the whole thing is raised to power minus 10. So this, they are multiplying with each other. We have bracket around them and then we have a power here. So this power is for all of them. So give this power to all of them. So the power of the power will multiply. So you can see when this three will multiply with minus seven, this three will multiply with the eight. This three will multiply with the minus nine. So you will have x raised to power minus 21, this y raised to power 24, z raised to power minus 27. The same process I will do here. This power, they are multiplying with each other and then they have bracket around them. And then uh, uh, we have a raised to power minus four. So this raised to power minus four power, that power minus four is for all of them. So I will give this power to all of them. And the power of the power multiplies with each other. So you will have eight multiplied minus four. So you will have minus 32. 7 multiply minus 4, that will give you minus 28, and minus 10 multiply with minus 4, it will be positive 40. 
So now you have this situation. So x and x, we will add their powers. So minus 21 minus 32, that will be minus 53. Y and y will multiply. So add their powers. So 24 minus 28, that will be minus 4. So z and z will multiply, and the powers will be added up. They're multiplying with each other. So the powers will be added up. So we have minus 27 plus 40, and that will be 13. So z is about 13. So you see the power of the x and the y that they are negative. So I will take them to the, into the denominator. So the final answer will be z raised to power 13, y x raised to power 53, and the y raised to power 4. So this is how you do question number 12, and it's a part. Hopefully you understand. Okay, so the next question is question number 12, and it's b part. And you can see this question here. And instead of reading the statement, uh, I first of all, just learn the strategy. I will solve them inside. I will simplify them, actually. The word is simplify uh, inside this bracket, okay? Same I will do here, and then we have this divide sign here. So this will become x raised power 8. This will become y raised power minus 6. This will remain y raised power 7, and the whole thing is raised power 3. Divide sign, then uh, this will become x raised power minus 11. This will become y raised power 4. This will become g raised power minus 5, and the whole thing raised power minus 2. So give this power to all of them individually. So you will have x to the power 24, 8 multiplied 3, that's 24, minus 6 multiplied 3, that will be minus 18, and z, 7 raised multiplied with the 3, that will be 24. So you will have x to the power 24, y raised to the power minus 18, and z raised to the power 21. And I, this divide sign, so I put a by sign here, and then I will write this whole thing in the denominator. This will multiply with this, these powers. So you will have x raised power minus 7 multiplied with minus 2, that will be plus 22. 4 multiplied with minus 2, that will be minus 8. And minus 5 multiplied with minus 2, that, that will be 10. So you will have this. Now, uh, I will solve them like this. Uh, I simplify them, I mean. And you will have 24 minus 22. So you are left with x squared and minus 18 plus 8. And that you y raised power minus 10. 21 minus 10, you will get z raised power 11. So you have x squared, z11, and because this power is negative, so I will take it into the denominator divided by y raised to power 10. So this is how you do question number 12, which is b part. So question number 12, and it's c part is a, b, and a, b raised power n divided by b, c, multiply c raised power n, multiply d divided by c, d divided by uh, B uh, raised power n plus 2 divided by C and raised power n plus 3. So, first of all, I will solve these two with each other. So, it will become A and B, n minus 1, and then C, that C will be n minus 2. So, I will convert this divide sign into multiply sign. So, this fraction will flip, which is after the division sign. So C raised power n plus C divided by B raised power n plus two. So I can I can I can simplify that. So here you have A, B raised power n minus one, and this power will be subtracted. It will become minus n minus two. C raised power n minus two, and this power will be added in it because they are both in the numerator. So you will have n raised n minus two plus n plus three. So you will have A, B raised to power this and this cancel minus three. And here you will have two n plus one. C raised to power 2n plus 1. So because this power is negative, so take this to the denominator. So you will have A, C raised to power 2n plus 1 divided by B cubed. So this is your final answer. That's question number 12 and C part. Okay, so we are going to the next question. That's question number 12 and it's D part. It says, uh, the question is showing up on your screen. Uh, you can see I can solve it very easily. Uh, A plus B whole raised to power n, B, C squared divided a plus b whole raised power n plus 3 divided by abc. So convert this divide sign into multiply, multiply sign. So the fraction which is after that deviant sign, that will reciprocate, that will flip. So now you have this situation, abc by a plus b bracket uh, raised power n plus 3. So I can solve this, OK? So first of all, let's say a, a will remain a, b, b 1 minus 1, and it will be 0. C, 1 minus 2, it will be minus 1. So this bracket, A plus B, this bracket, upstairs, the power is N minus N minus 3. So you, B raised power 0 is 1, so don't no need to write it. So A, this power is negative, so bring it downstairs. 
So C A by C into A plus B, this will become raised power minus C because this power is negative. So take it in the denominator. So you will have uh, uh, A divided by C into A plus B whole cube. So this is the final answer. That is question number 12 and it's D part. So uh, my dear students, uh, today uh, we have done the chapter number uh, four. It's uh, B exercise. And uh, I have tried to do it very fastly and try to explain uh, the concept. Hopefully this video will help you to learn this exercise and if you got stuck in somewhere so you can watch the video and get help uh, you know um, in mathematics uh, uh, the students whom i'm teaching face to face in the school at my home uh, i always tell them that the mathematics uh, you will learn when you will do it yourself by just copying that your teacher is solving on the whiteboard and you're copying it you will never learn it you act or, or you are watching the video and you are not practicing it yourself, then you will not learn it. You will learn this mathematics if you practice it yourself. Watching the video can help you, definitely it helps you. It, if you got stuck somewhere, it can help you or you can get an idea that how this thing is done. But you actually will master this concept when you will do this question yourself. It's a very important, uh, message from my side you can see so thank you very much everybody i hope i have been to some help to you it was a pleasure to teach you so thank you very much everybody have a good day god bless you